eminent speaker, Mr. Shirish Mahindru, is technical expert, smart SUT sustainable urban transport project at GIZ. He is an experienced professional in traffic and transportation planning field, and most of the credentials are earned on urban transportation projects such as city public transportation planning, comprehensive mobility planning, traffic impact assessment studies, integration planning, and projects related to use of ITS in smart city projects. He possesses all the abilities and qualities necessary to be successful in transport planning and infrastructure sector, and has developed a high range of interpersonal skills, including analytical, researcher, organizer, presentational, customer relations, communication, and team worker. He has a strong ability to communicate on many levels effectively as part of a multi-stakeholder focus role. And a very warm welcome to you, sir, for your presentation. Very good morning and good afternoon uh, to all the participants, depending on the time zones. I'm Shirish Mahendru. I'm a technical advisor for Smart SUT project. This is the project which has been implemented by GIZ commissioned by a technical uh, German Ministry of Economic Cooperation and Development, BMZ, under the German Climate Technology in Initiative. So today I'll be talking about uh, development of sustainable urban transport projects. This is for the Rail Technology Exposition uh, 2021. So uh, I will start very briefly with, with one quote. Uh, this is from the Enric Panalosa, who is the, who was a former mayor of Bogota, who is considered one of the prime person who transformed uh, public transport in Bogota. Bogota is in Colombia, so uh, he he mentioned that city is not where the poor uses cars, but rather than one where even the rich use public transport. So public transport has this very underlying importance into the city form and the city culture and it is very important to understand that so i'll be briefly talking about all the sustainable transport projects we the giz is doing and how we can achieve that sustainability into the urban transport uh, so i'll start with very brief introduction about uh, the project smart sut project the smart sut is a sustainable urban transport project uh, <clears throat> as i already mentioned it is commissioned by german ministry of economic cooperation and development bmz under the german climate technology initiative and the basic objective is to planning and implementation of sustainable transport projects in Indian selected Indian cities. So we have identified three Indian cities through uh, this has been implemented. This is jointly being implemented by the GIZ and, and the Ministry of Housing and Urban Affairs. So three cities, uh, Kochi, Bhuvneshwar and Coimbatore has been identified in the states of Kerala, Tamil Nadu and Odisha. And we also have certain projects at the national level. So the project complete project duration is from August 2017 to December 2021. So <clears throat> next I'll explain about the various activities, the key support areas uh, where we are supporting our partner cities uh, and, and, and also at the national levels. We are talking, we are supporting our cities at the regarding ITS and data analytics, non-motorized transportation, capacity development and institutional strengthening peer learning and knowledge exchange, this being very paramount to understand uh, for the institutional strengthening of any, any of the organization or any of the partner agency. UMTA being the urban, uh, urban metropolitan transport authority, unified Tran metropolitan transport authority, then we have the public transport improvements. We are also talking about GHG emissions, road safety, clean and alternative fuels. Recently, very recently, we started uh, discussions and we are supporting state of Kerala for hydrogen-based fuel cell buses for, for the intercity travel between Kochi and Trivandrum. And we also have certain projects where we are supporting our partner cities about the electric mobility and we, some of the research projects also happening on to multimodal transport. So, so these are the some of the activities which are happening at the national level. <clears throat> uh, very first thing is the national capacity building framework under this uh, this is housed at the Ministry of Housing and Urban Affairs. Uh, there are around 28 part participants from different states. Indian states are, are participating. They are they, there are active learning and the actual learning courses they are undertaking. And at the end of the, uh, at the during the during this uh, capacity learning program, they'll have the one action learning project. They undertake one project about the sustainable transport and they'll execute and they try to implement. And we also have the exchange program under this. Under this, we, we if if the, all the COVID regulations and the COVID protocols allowed, we'll take them to the Germany also to 
to have one one on one interaction with the best practices and the good practices happening across uh, Germany. So, and the second of the projects are the training need assessment for e-buses. This is like the what are the con kind of trainings and the modules and the learnings required for for adoption of e-buses in India. And uh, a few of the similar other projects like mobility as a service. This is for the integration of all the modes and to make a, and to develop a framework for the specific guidelines for the mobility as a service into urban transportation systems. We also have a, a few studies done on public bike sharing, and then we have a national international exposure visits for the various partner agencies and the uh, officials of the uh, partner agencies to have the understanding of the best practices happening in, in within India and across the world. And we are also the knowledge partners for the Urban Mobility India Conference. This is one of the largest uh, urban transport event happening every happens every year in India, and th this time it is happening in Kochi. So I'll very briefly touch upon all the state activities and the city activities we're done in doing in Kerala. Uh, we are supporting uh, Kochi Municipal Corporation for shared e-autos as a first mile and the last mile. We are we are giving a seed funding to the Kochi Municipal Corporation for 80 for for 80 e-autos that will help in, uh, in in enhancing the first and the last mile connectivity. We also design redesigning the arterial roads from the viewpoint of the pedestrians and the uh, and, and and the active mobility so gender study is one of the important study we are also taking it up uh, this is to understand the issues being challenging we face by the women while traveling into transport and how we can overcome that and how we can make the uh, travel safer for gender uh, women and and, and and different genders another important thing that is very recently kochi metropolitan transport authority has been institutionalized and constituted in kerala in kochi so we are supporting them with the with the, the UTF sources and also for identifying for the complete institutionalization strengthening and the capacity development of the KMTA. There are other exercises, for example, this we are doing for route rationalization and uh, study. This is to enhance the public transport city bus city bus transport system in Trivandrum, and we are doing this similar activity also for the Coimbatore. Under this activity, we are also going to have one. <clears throat> Uh, one data tool which will be the open source based which will help in uh, doing the data analytics at the uh, at the more efficient level and, and helps in uh, eradicating the the use of physical service for because these are very cost intensive and 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 and, and it comes at a heavy price for the for for any for any public transport agencies uh, similarly we did uh, we are doing some activities at the uh, in bhubaneswar in odisha for example data analytics tool for city bus system, we are also preparing one carb low carbon mobility plan. This is to uh, this is a vision document which will help us in lowering the GSG emissions. We have some parking policies and traffic management plan for the local roads. And uh, this one of the major exercise, one of the major support we are giving to capital region of urban transport is a newly organized, newly formed, uh, newly formed uh, public uh, public transport company under the. Uh, uh, managed by the government of Odisha. And there we are doing a complete hand holding. There are around 200 buses and they, with, with, with the support from GIZ and, 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 their, and the institutional strengthening, they have, they have pre-COVID, they have achieved from, with, with 200 plus buses, they achieved one lakh plus ridership. And some of the policy oriented research at state level is happening at electric mobility and parking area management plan. This is we're doing at the, all three states. So few of the activities that similar activities at Coimbatore is non-motorization plan. Uh, we are doing the important exercise we are, uh, we are supporting is the safe school presence for Coimbatore. This is we are identifying this network of schools where we can provide the uh, safe active mobility for, for, for all the students and, 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 and the school goers. And uh, <clears throat> similarly, the organization and capacity assessment. So from all this uh, understanding and from our experience that the very important thing and to underline experience is uh, for any sustainable project uh, the right <coughs> right capacity enhancing the capacities of the uh, any of the local agencies the partner agencies is very important this is this is very important in imparting uh, uh, enhancing the capacities at all levels local level state level and even at the national level so strengthening of the institutions, the handholding is very important to understand the issues and challenges and how we can overcome and how we can uh, reduce our reliance on the conventional sources of fuels and, 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 and increase and start, start innovating 
in terms of the sustainable transports and in also in terms of the innovative and the clean fuels so we'll we'll be keeping we'll be start keeping uh, talking about on, on the on that lines so so very briefly uh, what was a transportation system in the past uh, i think uh, four decades or five decades down the line the cities were used to be very compact uh, there were there were the proper land use and transport integration was there as 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 there were the public areas the commercial areas and, and even the residential areas they were all very nearby and there was cycle was a major source of major mode of transport and but with the introduction of cars the thing uh, the things started changing the the mobility of the city started changing and uh, and, and and the city started expanding this leads to a different problems and uh, this uh, is this may be the future of mobility or the present or the immediate future uh, of the transportation systems there we we should have the proper integration between the different modes we should have a equitable road space for every every user for every mode we should have a definite space from uh, cycling walking and and then the proper transitions between the interchanges between from one mode to different modes and and to the last mile and the first mile so integration of all the services is very important in this and uh, <clears throat> okay so so what uh, now we will uh, try to discuss about uh, what what constitutes a sustainable transport what exactly we is, is a sustainable transport all about so sustainable transport is the one which helps in reducing the social impact environmental impact the climatic impact and the economical impact on the overall ecosystem if we if we talk about the social impact the social impact means it it, it helps in uh, when we we when we have less roads when we have less cars it leads to the less road crashes and this helps in reducing travel times when we have an efficient public transport system this helps in reducing the travel times this also reduces social vulnerability and out of pocket expenses there will be less out of pocket expenses people have more, people will be having more time for themselves and their families and this also leads to the inclusive growth environmental impact we all know we have increasing pollution levels everybody has seen the case of delhi where the pollution levels have increased and increased so much that it is very difficult to breathe and we we have to increase our reliance on the renewable energy sources and alternative fuel technologies hydrogen green hydrogen or the electric mobility electric mobility also depends on the renewable sources so climatic impact is we have to reduce the carbon emission carbon emissions rise in temperature because with the paris agreement there is a one point we have to keep the temperature within 1.5 degrees so it is important in that aspect we have to reduce the dependence on fossil fuels less carbon dioxide emissions similarly economic impact is we need to have the equitable road space for every everybody there should be a space for the uh, equivalent road space for cycles for pedestrians for the last mile for the first mile for for the buses and we are not build, ro building roads uh, for the cars or we're not our, our approach should be uh, it should not be the city's approach and the planning should not be the car centric they should be the people centric we should keep the people at the center and then plan and, and and keeps planning about it it's not about the keeping the cars at the center and then making more wider road this will not lead to anywhere so economical innovations are very important suitable mix of modes are very important we need to have a competitive economy uh, more flexible and more reliant uh, financial <clears throat> financial i mean to say financial models and something like that yes so uh, so what contributes to the sustainable transport pro uh, projects there are different elements of sustainable transport projects sustainable transport projects uh, uh, we we have to talk about at all levels we have to talk about the multimodal integration because in in many of the big indian cities there 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 may be a peaceful approach there may be a stand alone uh, planning or, or understanding happening around the cities where they, if the, the metro is coming that they, they, they we have the network of metro but there, there's no integration between the other mode city bus services and if we have the integration of the complete brt system we need to have uh, the first mile and the last mile so what according to general understanding and what i also strongly believe into the hierarchy of modes is, is pedestrians needs to be have the first priority followed by cycles and then in, within two and three we we can have uh, ipt intermediate paratransit services that is autos electric autos or something like that micro mobility 
and then we can have the transit services and pick and drop and least uh, it should be the park and ride giving the more parking spaces and and things like that so for 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 undertaking any kind of integration multimodal integration uh, we need to have certain uh, there are five parameters of it and we also had uh, within gis it also we are uh, we with the support of uh, school of uh, center of policy and, and technology sep uh we are developing a, a multimodal uh, multimodal integration tool which will help in understanding the maturity of the uh, uh, maturity of the public transport system in any city so there are different five parameters or elements one is the network and the service integration how effective are the planning of routes and and the services within the city how are the service headways are there and how accessible are those uh, routes and how accessible is uh, complete network of the public transport system there is an equal importance of the physical integration as well how proximity of the transit sports uh, spot, stops are there how 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 equally they are distributed within the whole within the whole city shouldn't be like that once is one stop is there and that they, they should not be uh, homogeneously distributed uh, so this decreases the dependency and, and 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 reliability of the public transport system last mile connectivity is very important as i said and accessibility within the interchange zones we we have the interchange zones but they are not connected with each other so accessibility within the interchange zones is also very important another important thing is the fare integration suppose for example we i'm i'm boarding one one mode and then lighting from that one and getting into another mode the, the, it needs to be very seamless and 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 and, and very uh, less uh, problematic for for any of the riders or the users of public transport system so integration fair integrations in the form of fair technologies or the common mobility cards or 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 the digital wallets it needs to be have that seamless integration with all with with the different modes there also we need to have the information integration it shouldn't be like that if i'm getting out from the dmrc and the dtc there should be the common integration between the information integration there should be way finding messages there should be proper information imparted to the all the users of the public transport system they should have effective customer care they should have effective governance redressal systems and 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 another important thing and the very important thing i believe is in institutional integration they need to be have the complete decision making process every every city who is every every city agency or any transport agency who is responsible for the public transport system should they should start uh, they should start sitting together and start implementing the and start planning things as 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 a complete process not as a uh, not as a individual systems so that is very important now these days with the covid things covid times the data reliability has also increased very much because right now what is happening is Uh, uh we need to understand the travel patterns trip behaviors of, of 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 all the users and we need to constantly evolve this system we need to constantly evolve the planning processes is 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 ever ever, ever evolving process so we need to understand we the importance of dynamic data is very important for example there is there is there is one uh there is one there's a bus system in the city and if we have the proper gender desegregated data with us we have the travel pattern travel behaviors of the women and we have the de- uh, desire and diagrams we have the needs and 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 the travel patterns of the particular the uh, of the of the women we we can plan things accordingly so data data organizational level data at organization level and also at the lowest level is very important in that perspective so uh so the next thing we'll talk about is the first mile and the last mile connectivity the first mile and the last mile is the first mile is 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 basically and the last mile is basically from this immediate origin to the transit hub and then from the transit hub to the ultimate destination if we have the proper connectivity between these two systems then we'll have the proper alliance and people will start using the public transport system for example if i am using a metro if i'm using a bus system in in any city and and i from my home to the bus station or from my home to the metro station there is a there's no connectivity so this leads to uh, this 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 could be a deterrent for for using that particular particular system so we need to have a proper first mile last mile connectivity within the system uh gz is supporting for example the gz is also supporting a few of the uh, a few of our partner cities like bhubaneswar we are supporting them with a 50 uh, for 
50 electric waters for the first mile and our last mile for the city bus system uh, in Bhubaneswar and, and also to the 80 bus, 80 electric waters for, for the, uh, that would be planned around the city bus system as well as for around the, uh, the, the uh, Kochi Metro. So what can be done? What can the elements of enhanced connectivity is uh, we, we need to have the full, full provision for the universal accessibility of all the interchanges. The, so it is very important to have the well-connected system uh, from this, the planning should start immediately from the home to the final destination, immediate origin to the in, ultimate origin to the ultimate destination. They should not be planned from uh, within, within the system. I mean, the, with the final leg of the system, it should be planned from the final leg and uh, final leg to the final destination. And uh, we need to have a very good pedestrian infrastructure around, so which which enhance the pedestrian movement, which enhance the active mobility. Public bike sharing is very important, but in Indian context, we need also need to understand public bike sharing is also uh, is, is very important. But we have to understand that public bike sharing, we have to undertake the long term approach as well. Few of the cities have started implementing the public bike sharing scheme, but they have done it as a standalone project. So this led to a, a, a failure or, or 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 the less uh, I, I would say the less uh, uh, they have not gained that momentum that they should have gained in, in, in an actual sense. So it is very important to have a formal uh, space parking spaces for IPT, and that should be the that should also be the uh, alternate technologies we can use. And we need to have equitable road space, providing equal space for pedestrians, cycling, uh, and the IPT, and and to all the active mobility uh, modes. So public bike sharing. Public bike sharing is very important. This this has been uh, taken out from one of our recently concluded study on public bike sharing systems in India. We have done a critical evaluation of the different public bike sharing schemes happening around the city and the world, and what are the key challenges and the key takeaways we can have from this. Uh, it, the, the, there are many definitions. There are many development corporations who have the different definitions. I've just, for the reference, I've taken took out uh, one uh, uh, general uh, definition for the public bike sharing from Ministry of Housing, Ministry of Housing and Urban Affairs. It is a high quality public high quality bicycle based public transport system in which bicycles stored in a closed space network of stations are made available for the short term use. So uh, I'm just opening some food for thought for the larger audience just to understand a uh, few of the concepts and the few of the understanding whether they uh, uh, so it's, it's a mind to understand the right mindset also. So is, is public by sharing a silver bullet to increase the mode share for the cycling in the city? Until unless it is one of the many strategies to encourage cycling, including the development of cycling infrastructure, we cannot have a public by sharing scheme as a standalone project. So it is very important to have to have the cycling infrastructure built around the system. So to, it is very important to consider this one of the many strategies. And the second is, do cities have a clear objective of implementing the PBA system? The decision for selection of uh, business models what kind of business model, either it is a net cost model or it's a gross cost model, depending upon the kind of usage and the depending on the kind of resources available. So it is very important to have a thorough understanding about this. The system planning is very important. Are we going to have a, uh, what is our vision, long-term vision? This is for the cycling city or it is for the revolve around the, uh, for the for the for the major transit stations and and what are the forms different forms available it is a pedal cycle pedal assist electric power we need to understand and we have to accordingly provide the best solution for that within the pbs framework for any city and we also need to have a right understanding what the right regulatory frameworks few cities are in introduced the uh, e-bikes uh, without pedal and uh, within the regulatory framework but we we need to understand and they are they Though they lie in innovative mobility solution, but they need to align their choices with the intent to implement PBS. So the basic thing is to understand that the PBS will, will not, I mean the pilot project for uh, 1000 cycles or 500 cycles will not make a wonders until unless we have a clear vision of what the uh, public by sharing. Uh, it would be, uh, it will not, uh, we'll, we cannot have the desired results which we intended to. Uh, now I'm going to show a few of the studies uh, we have done and the case studies. Like for example, 
there are the few of the international cities like Copenhagen, Antwerp, New York, London, to, uh, and few of the Indian cities like Pune, Masuru, Bangalore, and Rachi. We did some studies. We tried to understand. And, and uh, yes, and we try to understand. For example, uh, what is this bicycle? Uh, what is the number of bicycles per square kilometer? And what are the constituent trips uh, with respect to the total bicycles? For example. Uh, Copenhagen has around 53 bicycles per square kilometer, and 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 the average uh, seven trips have been uh, uh, per cycle per day uh, are recorded in 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 this. For example, similarly in Bhopal, it is approximately one cycle per square kilometer and the one trip. So, so the network of cycles and the network within system is is very important. We have to have a long term vision about it. What do we really intend to do with the public bike sharing? Uh, this is another case for the bicycles per thousand population. We see the Huangzhou, Antwerp, Copenhagen. They have 8.4 cycles per per thousand population. Bhopal has point to India in the past is was known for the cycling, uh, and but this has started slowly uh, evading gradually, which is because introduction of a huge amount of cars in the paper reliance on the private mode of transport. So we 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 need to overcome that. The future. What I strongly believe is the uh, the future of Indian mobility is what was the past of the Indian cities. That is the cycling and the active mobility. We need to focus more and we need to plan things accordingly. We need to have proper understanding and the proper vision for to to implement those kind of systems and and to implement the long term vision. So I have just listed out few of the prevailing issues and what are the key deterrents for any public bike sharing systems in India. Uh, I'll just read out and and uh, Indian public bike sharing systems are small scale and have a limited spatial coverage and unaffordable rates and sometimes inadequate cycling infrastructure. In a few of the Indian cities, we when we were doing system research, we also find out that for even a smaller city which was built around for an even for a smaller city where they have implemented the public bike sharing scheme which was built around the past system, but the problem was with the three different vendors and then three different vendors had the three different digital wallets. For example, I'm getting off the bus. I want to put I want to uh, take a cycle for from that bus station to my home. Uh, I need to have a se separate digital wallet for that particular company. So that is also very important. And this one of the major dead trends. So if I want to use from one vendor to a different vendor, I need to have the third uh, digital wallet of that vendor and vice versa. So this is also one of the major deterrents. Public transport system implemented in isolation as not as a standalone and as a standalone project, not as a uh, not not as a vision and not as a long term vision, not as a complete uh, cycling. I mean, to we need to have a proper vision for that. And generally, they do not expand beyond the pilot projects and. PBS system implementation without a long term vision for the cycling process. So we need to have it. So the key and the paramount thing is we need to have a longer term vision for implementing such kind of systems and such kind of uh, sustainable projects. And the key key takeaways is let's aim for the large scale in the city by network expansion. Successful PBS systems have the long term vision and we need to have the development of cycling infrastructure parallelly. We, I mean, the one uh, cycling track starting it for the four kilometer, then it gets, uh, then it's get way, washed away, or they, there's no cycling around when we entering to city. So these, these are the one of the dead trends which which doesn't allow people to to opt for the cycling because they they feel unsafe. We need to have the safe conducive environment also, and it is very important to integrate the public by sharing with with the public transport and. There are different models like gross cost, net cost, and the suitability of that mode, all uh, of that financial model also depends upon the kind of infrastructure we want to put in. So the right selection of uh, the contracting model is also very important. So I'll, I'll, after this, uh, I'll briefly talk about the transit oriented development also. So uh, what was the need for the TOD? Why do we need transit oriented development? When we see other things in the past or, the, or also in the present, so there is a typical development pattern we follow in cities. Urban planning issues, that's their typical development pattern. We have uh, residential pockets, we have public space pockets, then we have retail and office and commercial space pockets. And they are little, and they are little, uh, they, they are, they, they're not, uh, they're not, they're not merged with each other. I mean, they're not, uh, 
uh, mixed use they they so the this leads to different problems so one is traveling for they one has to travel for more there are the longer trips uh, this leads to more use of private cars this leads to more pollution then the use of high more cars means more more use of uh, energy consumption more land for roads and this and once we have the wider networks more roads then leads to also leads to problems for the pedestrians and cycling because these are meant for the shorter distances so we need to understand it very clearly and we need to plan the things accordingly so how we how we generally define transit oriented development it is basically in an innovative approach to have the land use and the well ident well identified land use and the transport integration we nearly need to integrate both the land use uh, land use components and and the transportation they need to be the compact high density and and the mixed use development near transport nodes so because when we have the compact and the high density developments people will travel less and they will rely more on the public transport modes and and they should be have a more conducive and 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 the inclusive environment once we have the ecss for the transit transit facilities uh, people will have the more prefer walking and the discouraged people to use more personal use of transports and we need to demarcate mixed use residential commercial areas to maximize we need to amalgamate all different land uses into one area so that there is a proper attraction and attraction and people are there there are no longer trips so we need to understand that and this leads to the safe and living environment and this also increases the local efficiencies by integrating walking cycling and public transport as already explained so uh what are the core eight principles of transit oriented development uh, we need to have a proper connection we need to create the dense networks of between the streets and the paths we need to have the compact environment that means that we have to create the regions with the short commutes uh, yes the transit being the center point of attraction we, we need to have the well accessibility within the transit uh, through the transit services and we have to locate our developments near the public transport so to reduce the uh, reduce the personal use of travel personal use of mode personal use modes of transport and also the longer trips and we need to densify i mean we need to optimize density we need to have a little compact nature and we shall plan for the mixed use and of course yes the cycling and and, and is the walking is the paramount thing and uh, i think we should uh, our development should revolve around those things and they need to be proper shared we should have the deterrents for using the uh, more cars we should not have the free public parking spaces we should not have the on street parkings free public on street parkings so it is very important to understand that uh, to have that conducive environment uh, i have explained about uh, uh, various principles and the various elements of the sustainable transport this is one of the ex, uh, a, one of the project we we we, we supported at uh, Coimbatore City Municipal Corporation about the we did one technical event uh, within the uh, within the Coimbatore for the very busy street. This is a bazaar, uh, big bazaar street, and uh, we tried to have uh, we tried to understand and make people stakeholders make aware about what all changes we can bring in with the small small things and how important is to have a regularized growth and 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 to equitable road space so i'm just uh, putting one this video for your for your better understanding this we did in uh, dz uh, for under smart city project support to kochi uh, i'm sorry coimbatore city municipal corporation in 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 2019 so we have we have also done the similar initiatives for the cycle path challenge for kochi and all very recently into the government on another street also so i'm just playing it
So these were the small small interventions we did. Thank you. So that's for my presentation and I'm open for all questions and anything. Thank you.